found another one hiding. It's just here. And I can't get in with a socket because there's not enough clearance. So you have to do it with spanners. And can't tell you what size these spanners are. What this should be is 11.30 seconds, according to my spanners that don't tell you what kind of imperial fitting they are. But these aren't that, these are other spanners that just happen to be the same size, so yeah. So it's a lot of this, a lot of this job is a lot of this. I'll bring you back when I'm done. Well that's out. That was quite difficult. It was quite difficult to do. Now then, one of the problems I'd given myself was where this axle stand is. It was pretty much where my hand wanted to be to feed things through, but we got there in the end. I have snipped the connectors for the brake light switch on the old wiring loom side. The reason for this, somebody's done something with the connectors here before me, and I'm not sure, because I haven't done any research into it, how replaceable the switch is, what sort of connections are on the end, and how much wire I'll need. So I decided leave everything as much as I can on the switch side, snip it off the old loom which I'm replacing, and then I can deal with this when the new loom is in. Next challenge is it disappears up into this closed section of the chassis, and I can't get round with my hands or my eyes to see what happens here. Now, I do know in the engine bay that the wiring emerges somewhere around here. So I'm hoping I can just pull the wires in the engine bay and then all of this will feed through. Because I can't see how else you would go about doing that bit. So let's give that a go and see what happens. After some fiddling about, I found out where the wires emerge and there's just a little hole here. And you can just make out there's some wires coming out of there and some wires coming out of there. They're the only wires left in the engine bay that disappear into the chassis. Everything else has been replaced. So I'm going to unbolt the lower bolts on this inner wing. I'm not going to take the top ones out because all I need to do is just swing this out of the way a little bit so I can get my hand in. I don't see much point removing the entire panel. I remember how annoying these were to do last time I started putting all the bolts and everything back in, so I don't want to be fiddling about with that if I can help it. So let's hope these come undone without too much trouble. With a bit of help from Pat, I got all of these out. A couple of what I'm pretty sure should have been captive nuts weren't anymore. So we've got all of them out. I did take the top ones out, I was mistaken. The ones I thought were awkward were different fixings in a similar place. So this panel is now ready to come out and that should give me really good access. fixings to come out. So I was right and I was wrong. These screw heads on here are actually holding the top of it in, which I hadn't realised, so I have to get those out now. Let's try again.
Well, it's not all the way out, but it's out enough for what I need. I'll show you why. If you look down there, you can just see that hole is where the wiring comes through, and I couldn't really get to that with the uh, arch liner thingy in place properly. Now, it looks like It looks like to get this out fully, what you have to do is take the outer wing off, which I don't want to do. But that's enough out of the way that I can hopefully now get this wiring pulled. And it's the last run from just here up into the engine bay. I'm having a slight issue um, with this wiring at the moment because these are the two main wires. This is original wiring that comes along the chassis. And because I've got this inner guard out of the way, I can get my hand in here and I can reach the wiring that's in the engine bay. And you sort of have to pull this end and feed it through from this end, sort of at the same time. The problem is, one of the wires is going through the nice round hole and one of them is going through the triangular hole next to it, which I don't think the wiring is supposed to go through. So one keeps getting jammed, and because these both go in the chassis wheel, they're sort of twisted around each other a little bit, and everything seems to be trying to knot together. So it's a little bit frustrating to do. Once you get them going, they're fine, but getting them moving is proving tricky. Finally, it's all through. I've got the string running front to back. It's nicely free moving. Hopefully that will mean that the new wiring goes through nice and smoothly. I will correct down here, you can see with the strings there's that triangle hole and the round hole. I'm pretty sure they should both come through that round hole. So I'll correct that when the new wiring goes in, but I am done for today. This has been quite enough work. I'll come back to this with a fresh mind. So, it's progress. And we're nearly there. That's the last bit of the old wiring out. So it's all new wiring from here. Hooray. The wiring route's changed again, and there's a good reason for it. There's a lot of trial and error in this job. So I've got those wires back through where they go, next to the um, screen wash bottle. But these ones, I had to pull all that out again, and then re-thread it, because I'd threaded these through from the inside of the car to the engine bay, you're actually supposed to go the other way. It's still just as difficult to do, um, but if you don't do it this way round, the wires aren't the right lengths where you need them. It's not by much, but it's by enough. So that's now correct. I've also removed the wiring from this second grommet here, because that is where the speedo cable comes out as far as I can tell, and there's not really another hole in the bulkhead I can use for it to go through. It wouldn't fit with the wiring coming through here anyway. And how did I come to this conclusion? Well, I spent a good chunk of last night trying to find as many LD10 pictures as I could so that I could get to the bottom of what on earth was going on with the wiring in this car, because almost every car I've looked at, the wiring is different and they were all slightly different routes and I found one picture of one car where this area was very clearly the original varnish type wiring and that one really helped me understand what other people had done with their cars and what I was seeing was the voltage regulator is the correct way around so having all the connectors this side is correct on a couple of cars this has been swapped around for presumably making the wiring route they've done a bit easier. So I know this is a good point to start from. I also know that the grommet here is where the bulk of the wiring comes out because every car modified or otherwise, it comes out at this point, most of the wires. That does make a lot of sense with the shape of the harness that we've got. It makes a lot of sense with what's in the car. What I didn't know was this area up here on ours you can see there's some little holes and I think these are for cable clamps 
because it looked like this area here where you've got all the connectors, this joins onto the section that goes from the steering column. There's a, a section that runs on the outside of the steering column. And I think this area used to have a different kind of connector block where it's very similar to these sort of terminals. And I've seen them for sale before for cars of this era. And I think originally there was a connector block on here and these were bare wires and you just screwed in whichever ones you wanted, a bit like a really fancy chop block. And I think that's what's been causing me the confusion is we're missing this piece completely and the way it had been rewired was also very, very different to any other car I'd seen. So I think we've got to the bottom of that, I think. I think I've also figured out the uh, speedo cable route, which is, this is the speedo cable here. I did try feeding it through a couple of the holes in the chassis. It does fit, but I was having trouble getting this piece, which is your locking ring, to actually go through where I wanted it to go. And it was quite a tight bend, which didn't seem the best idea with a cable. So what I've done instead is I've pulled all the excess up from underneath the car. I can then feed this into the car through where are we? Through that grommet there, uh, which only just fits through, and then that should mean that the speedo cable is routed properly, and I can hopefully get a little clamp or something on it just to help guide it where it needs to belong. Again, although this one seems to be in the same place on all the cars I've looked at, what I can't see is how it's actually fixed to the car and the route it takes, and I haven't been able to find any diagrams. So trial and error again on that one. That's what's slowing me down on this job more than anything. All the bits and pieces you have to do, it's all trial and error. Um, there's a little bit of guidance but what there is is generally more confusing than helpful. Not because the information out there is particularly wrong but because these cars are so old now that everybody has done theirs a slightly different way. There aren't many original examples left. So yeah I'm gonna Pop that grommet out, because with that in, this doesn't fit, that's how tight the fit is there. And then, I think this one is for the temperature sender. Now before, the temperature sender and the speedo cable both came out of this one, but on the other cars I've looked at, some do and some don't. So, I don't really know on that one. Put a grommet on here, this is the choke cable one, just to protect everything. It's clearly not had one for a while. <sighs> yeah, it's um, a job. This is the last run of the new wiring that's going in along the chassis, and there's two lengths that go along the chassis, and you have to feed them both through at the same time. This one is in as far as it needs to go and I think this one is as well I'm not a hundred percent sure I do know when everything's all in the chassis it's easy to move it forwards and backwards if you need to so we'll figure that out later but I've stopped pulling on this one because the plastic sheath sections are usually anywhere that's sort of outside the bodywork and that's about where this is I can always move it if I need to later now it is a bit tricky doing this one. This has all gone through the proper hole, which you can't see because it's filled up now, but rather than coming up through that triangular hole and that round hole, they both go through the round one now, which makes things a lot tidier. But when you're feeding the wiring through from above, because I can get my hand in through there to feed it, what I found helps is pulling some excess through the chassis, the where this triangular hole is here, and then sort of pushing it up, so all this section is blind, until you get to this section here where it branches. And you can just sort of get your hand in there and feel where the hole is, but you can't see anything. Um, you physically can't get around the chassis without dismantling the car. But with a bit of patience, you can get everything through. And just up here, 
is the brake switch and this is the wiring for the brake switch so I know I'm just about in the right place with this loom so far now it's a case of pulling on the strings and there are little holes on the back of the chassis so everywhere there's a hole you sort of take up your slack you pull your cable through both of them and then you find your next hole and then you just work it along until everything goes in. It should be easier until I get right to the back end where it's a bit complicated around the fuel tank. I'll be happy when this is in because then we can start connecting and testing. And that's the fun bit, hopefully. Here's one of the other problems. It's raining. <laughs> What even is the weather this year? It has been ridiculous. Oh, I'm ready for a break anyway. I've got the wiring about halfway down the sill now and it's just a case of wiggling it through. Everything's under cover so it's going to be safe from the water. I don't think this is going to last very long. It's just annoying. It is still raining, but not as much as it was. What I wanted to try and show you was how I'm doing this section. Um, the only access you have to this chassis rail here is some holes in the back edge. So as I'm pulling the string, where are we? as I'm pulling this string, which you can just about see there, I'm also guiding the wire through the chassis rail uh, just to make sure nothing snags and the string doesn't snap. So far so good. But it is quite tricky. What's making it tricky is this pinch point you can't actually see. Here you go, you can just see the little wire poking up there. There's a hole just on the other side of the chassis here, which is where I'm trying to feed this section through. I then have to go uh, over the top and then back into the chassis to the end, and then I've got to pop out again uh, to get to the wiring for the back end. It's quite tricky. Okay, here we are under the car. These are the, these here are the holes in the chassis I was talking about. So it comes through and pops out the last one before the cross member. The one with the fuel sender wire actually goes underneath, so it ducks under, this will pull tight, and then goes back up into the first hole after the cross member, through the chassis, and then pops out here at the first one before, so it pops out here at the last one before the rear cross member and then your blue wire, your blue with the purple trace, that will run along this cross member and up into the fuel tank. That's probably the most difficult one to do on the back of the wiring here. The other one does follow a very similar route um, and then pops out here and doubles back for the boot floor and goes up into the car. After quite a bit of effort, we're all in. The wires are over here where they should be. They're up there where they should be. These two tails that come out the end of the chassis basically, where are we? They go up through those two little holes in the boot floor right in the corner. So, and just pop up there like that, and that's for the rear lights and stuff. Oh, the 
fuel sender wire is loosely laid in there. Um, I'm going to drop this tank and give it a good clean on the outside and give it some extra protection as much as we can. Just to future proof it, might as well, it's already most of the way out so it's not much more work to take it all the way out. When you're under the car you can see how the wiring sort of loops in and out and over and under and once it's in it's actually really tidy it's a really good way of hiding it all and presumably keeping the weather off it but yeah it's been a job this section's not been as bad as I was worried it might be but now all the new wiring's in which is a bit of a milestone and we can focus on getting everything connected and everything all tested now and hopefully, fingers crossed, it all works normally. Now, that mystery wire I've got, if you look on this chassis rail here, on the, I think it's like an X-beam sort of a shape, there's a black wire there running from the battery. That runs all the way to the starter motor, way down there. And uh, yeah, that's much heavier gauge than the wire I've got left over. So I'm gonna have to contact the harness supplier and ask them what it's supposed to be for. I'm also definitely going to have to make new stator tube wiring because it's not provided uh, and it seems a bit silly leaving the old wiring in there if I'm replacing everything else but I do understand now why people normally do. Need to get a few connectors some of the lights and things need bullet connectors that aren't on the loom and, and that sort of business so a little bit of fiddling about but not too much.